Hello, my friend. This is Pat Boone, and just like you, I'm listening to On Faith Edge with Joe Taylor. Where I'm lucky is the base of my comedy and the base of my personal life is grounded in something much deeper than just the laugh. And so, therefore, when the days aren't funny, I can still survive. Grounded in more than just the laugh. I can't imagine a day without laughter if Shonda's around. But grounded is right, and she is grounded. Thank you to Pat Boone for the introduction. Pat was our guest on the last episode of On Faith's Edge. We talked about the new hit movie, God's Not Dead 2. He gave us a little American history lesson and imparted all kinds of wisdom in a way that only Pat Boone can do. You can hear that conversation at onfaithsedge.com slash 61. That's onfaithsedge.com slash 61. Well, hello. Welcome to the 62nd episode of On Faith's Edge. My name is Joe Taylor, recovering atheist and your servant in Jesus Christ. This is your place to hear conversations about God and living a life of faith in Jesus Christ. I cannot wait for you to hear this conversation with comedian Shonda Pierce. She is absolutely hilarious. And in this conversation, Shonda is very vulnerable and honest about her faith, uh, her life, and she does it in only the way, in only a way that Shonda Pierce can do it, making you laugh and smile the whole way through. Uh, Shonda is the all-time number one selling female stand-up comedian. She's Emmy nominated. She's a television host, author, and actress. She's appeared on Entertainment Tonight, The View, Fox News Channel, and Variety raved about her ability to draw audiences. She has just released her new DVD, Shonda Pierce Laughing in the Dark. Based on her personal struggle to overcome depression, she remarkably makes her way through adversity, heart-wrenching loss, and her own depression with the gift of humor. Uh, Just as exciting is her new series exclusively on the Dove channel, Stand Up for Families, featuring the comedy of Brad Stein, Michael Jr., Bone Hampton, Michael Joyner, uh, Taylor Mason, and many, many more. They have what you call in Tennessee, we have what you call decoration day. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where you go, if any of your kinfolk has passed, you go to the cemetery and you put flowers on graves and you put flowers on graves that nobody cared about. So you just decorate the place up and then you sit and have fried chicken with the dead, I guess. (laughs) You take your potato salad down there. Am I right? How many from Tennessee? You know, you have a picnic in the cemetery. Now, I'd like to think that there are angels in this world, but I'm going to tell you, if a a hand come up out of that ground and got my chicken leg... I would give my life to Jesus again. I got to be very honest with you, Shonda. Um, I love your stuff. You're hilarious. Thank you. You're hilarious. But this is a lot about brownie points with my wife, Karen. As as it should be. As it should be, smarty pants. She is a huge fan. My wife, Karen, is a huge fan of Shonda Pierce. Well, I am very, very honored. But you know what's so funny is I... I don't get a lot of huge fans that are men. I mean, a few here and there. But I, everybody goes, why is all your concerts just filled with women? I go, because I am one, and we talk about the men. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, we like it that way. Well, there, there's two things I can count on with Karen, and this puts you right up there. Uh-oh. Shonda Pierce and Duran Duran. <laughs> Do I ever feel honored? There oh you are. Stars. That's hilarious. You are well, hungry. They have more hair than you I You are hungry like the wolf, Shonda. There you go. That's all I said. <laughs> well, the clip we just heard was from your new TV series, Stand Up for, for Families. Yes. Uh, exclusively on the Dove Channel. Yes. Tell us about Stand Up for Families. You know what I love about the Dove Channel? They, they chose their first stab into original programming, and they, they chose comedy. And I love that because families are such in a place where they need to laugh. And I, you know, I, am, I have adult children now, and I remember navigating, you know, the three networks a long time ago of what the kids could watch, what mom and dad wanted to watch, and then we had to wait for them to go to bed, and then we could, v, you know, we could video something, and now you can, you can, you know, do it on your uh, downloads, you know, or now you can get it from Netflix and all that. All that is such trouble sometimes now. We have all this technology. With the Dove Channel, you put it on any kind of, 
format you want to, your cell phone, your iPad, you could go to Roku, you do all these things. And they chose their, their first stab into original programming, not just, you know, showing Little House on the Prairie and some of the safe things for families right, to watch. Right. They chose to dive into the, to stand-up comedy. In a world where stand-up comedy is not always viewed to be clean, and what I love about it is now the entire family can sit on one couch and there's something for everybody in one show. There's, you know, there's a comedian that's going to make your five-year-old crack up, and then there's a comedian that's going to make grandpa crack up. And in every 10 minutes, there's another comedian, you know, and we, and we are, we are people who have dedicated our lives to hold on to our faith and our moral compass in the midst of having a job as a stand-up comedian. And it turned out great. You know, it's funny. I heard Brad Stein say one time about, about clean comedy. He said, anybody can curse. Yes. It doesn't take a lot of originality, a lot of creativity to yeah. curse. You just string a bunch of nasty words together and shock a crowd. And, yeah. and, and that is what, is what is so unique about the comedy of yourself, Brad Stein. Um, Michael Jr. Michael Jr. Yeah, the Jr. list goes on. We had some um, Taylor Mason, one of the most talented ventriloquists I've ever Jeff seen in Allen. my life. Jeff Allen, we Jeff have Allen, had, hilarious. yeah. These are people that have been on The Tonight Show that, you know, yep. that really done well in this craft and done it keeping, you know, family in mind. So who can we expect to see on Stand Up for Families? You'll see Brad Stein. No he, kidding. He did great. It was hysterical. You'll see a wonderful Put a helmet gal. on. Yeah. You'll see a wonderful <laughs> gal named Kay Dodd who was so funny. He used to travel with the Blue Collar Comedy Guys. Um, you'll see uh, Michael Jr. You'll see uh, uh, Anthony Griffith, who is a consummate stand-up, who's been on The Tonight Show at least a dozen times in his career, and now uh, suffering from MS, and yet still hysterically funny. And, 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 you know, and that's another thing that comedy allows you to do. You can bring up a lot of subject matter that would be difficult to talk about, but you can talk about it in a way that opens up a heart and enlightens a crowd, and then, and then perhaps leave them with a little hope, piece of hope you know, from heaven, and, and we're loving it. How did, you, uh, how did you get all these guys together? Oh, that, that was the hard part. It's like wrangling kindergartners. You know, when you have that many comics in a green room, we taped three how, shows. Well, first of all, the question, how much did they have to do with vast amounts of Ritalin? <laughs> That's right. We had a, Instead of little cups of peanuts, you know, in the green room, it was Ritalin. You know, it was, it, some people are, we used to have this joke going, okay, no jokes in the green room. We got, because we said, we are really each other's fans, you know, right. and so it, it was like a little homecoming for some of us, you know, to just right. sit around and visit because we're all doing our jobs and our careers. And stand up comedy is about standing up by yourself. Right. And I've traveled for 25 years doing this and most of the time by myself. So it was a delight to just get to host these guys and watch them all sitting around eating a sandwich. And, you know, and we cut up and we talked and visited and it was wonderful. And then we did the show that night and, it, and the crowd loved it and the, it was great variety and it was you know very well done and so yeah i'm excited I, and i think it i think it goes well and if you you know download all this and watch it we'll we'll get to do some more so is this a series or is this a one time event so. we okay. did three we did three specials nice. and we hope that the series takes off we really do but you remember like laughing years ago and the carol burnett story years ago the mm-hmm. the Carol Burnett show. We don't we don't have that kind of variety on television anymore, and so I, yeah, I was excited to to see that they would do this. I love it. Sean, is it a, is it a variety style show? It's is all it? comedy. Okay, all comedy of, of different sorts, but all all comedians. Yeah, so it was great. What were some of your favorite moments? You know, um, a young man named P.J. Walsh, who is you know, and that's another thing about clean comedy, Joe. We don't have just certain words that you leave out and make it clean. We also then have denominational and theological boundaries and ideas that you have to kind of navigate through. PJ is a Catholic, a great Catholic man. He goes now to an Episcopal church a lot. So his his boundary might be a little different than my boundary. But what I love about PJ Walsh is he was also a Marine and dedicated his service to our country and and climbed the ladder of that success till he wound up in the White House, you know, for years. And now and spends wow. his most of his career as a comedian, he spends entertaining veterans and the troops in other countries. And so I love that we had that variety there. We had him and he was funny, you know, and, and I watched some of it going, Okay, we might have to take that out or you know what I mean, but 
but I loved it, and we all respect and loved him, and he's right where he is growing in his faith and in his compass, you know. And so, same thing for uh, other comics. We had a, a guy named Bone Hampton who's been in some Sandra Bullock's movies. He's been on The View a lot. He comes from a different tradition than I do. A great guy, a great African-American man that speaks to that culture. And so, you know, and so I love that we had that variety. But it is interesting. I used to say a lot in traveling and touring that, you know, I'm in a different denomination almost every night of the week. So I used to try to fit into all of them like a Christian schizophrenic because there is the variety of Christians out there is almost about the variety of the size of women. You know, it's just there. It is just crazy, you know. And so the Dev Channel, my hat's off to them to try to navigate and fit all of those people in one room on one show. And it worked and the entire family can enjoy it. That's what's great about it. Fantastic. Yeah, it is. It's really it. good. Yeah, cannot wait to see it. Cannot wait to see it. You are also releasing a deeply personal project. It is. It called is called Laughing in the Dark. Yes. Can you tell us about Laughing in the Dark? You know, it came out in the movies. A, 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 a documentary team had just started following me around. I had gotten an award as the most awarded female comic in history, which surprised me to tell you the truth, and I'm sure surprised a lot of people. I. I even talked to the man from the RIA, the one who does gives you the gold records and the platinum records, and I told him, "Are you sure this is right?" <laughs> because I'm like, "There's a lot of people that are bigger, you know, more su- looks more successful than I do." He goes, "No, we did the numbers twice. You, you're it, and we never heard of you." <laughs> and I'm like, "Wow, you know, well, thank you, sir. You know, but a lot of it is because I don't do." dark comedy clubs you know I did maybe a handful when I first started out and right. I'm in theaters for the most part or great big churches or coliseums and and so when that award came along I had a group of people well-meaning wonderful brilliant managers and agents that says we need to do like a documentary of the making of of your life and your comedy and how successful you have 500,000 followers on Facebook and so wow. yeah so we we want to we want to tell the world the story And when they started following me around, my entire personal life fell apart. Now, I I began my comedy career because I had, I felt like a testimony I wanted to share. And I didn't want to just blurt out the sadness of my life. And I was a middle child of a holiness family, you know, a very conservative church family that fell in love with stand-up comedy. Go tell that to your, you know, your mom who's got her (laughs) hair up in a bun. You know, that wasn't an easy conversation. And so I became a comedian and because I wanted to tell a story to a crowd. And thinking that that my testimony was done, you know, and you're just going to share that for a while. And then when this documentary, they started following me around, I lost contact with a child that that broke my husband and mine's heart. My mother passed away and and my husband passed away Mm -hmm. about two years ago. And it was the most challenging thing in my life that I have ever faced and that I still face every day is life without him. All that being said, all the while I have to make a living as a stand-up comedian and make a crowd laugh. It sounds almost psychotic. (laughs) But without my faith, it would be. Without a foundation of something bigger than myself, I don't think I could navigate any of those days, much less continue making a living that my mortgage company appreciates. And so um, and what, So when the documentary was finished and we sat and edited it together and we looked at what we had, it was, a, it was an amazing journey. And it came out in the movie theaters uh, back in October. And the night that it, it showed in 900 theaters or whatever, it was number five in the country. $1.1 million Dollars. In, yeah. in a weekend. Yeah. And that, which is unheard of for documentary and especially faith-based films. You right. know what I mean? And, and so it, it, a lot of people that dedicated time and energy into it, it, it was just an amazing venture. It, just an amazing venture. What I love is it is a love story between my husband and I and how to survive some of life's toughest things. Um, it's a great tribute to him. But it's also just a great tribute to God and how to survive life. God never promised that everything's going to be easy out there. And I'll be honest with you, I grew up in the church. There were time in our lives that when the church sold a bill of goods and said, come to know Jesus and your life's going to turn out perfect. Come to know Jesus and you'll have prosperity and love and hope forever and ever. Amen. And that's not true. My foundation in my faith keeps me moving in, in, in the adventures of hope. But 
but life is still hard. Absolutely. And, and we will still face tough things. I don't understand. You know, there's a lot of comedians who come from difficult times. And when that laughter is no longer the medicine uh, and, and when it's used as a drug and it fails them, they'll check out. They commit suicide. They, they, you hear that they're all, you know, addicted to all kinds of things, you know. And there, but by the grace of God, would be me too. Mm. Where I'm lucky is the base of my comedy and the base of my personal life is grounded in something much deeper than just the laugh. And so, therefore, when the days aren't funny, I can still survive it. Amen. Amen, Shonda. Yeah. So... Laughter in the dark is pretty much the making of Shonda Pierce. It is. It's the ups and downs. You know, it's one thing. It took 50 years to live the, the, you know, those stories. It took 90 minutes to show it on tel- you know, to show it on a big screen. And oh my goodness, it, it is a, you know, it, it, I look back at some of the hairdos I've had in my projects, the hip size, you know. So you, you sit and watch the entire your entire life unfold. It's uh, it's quite daunting. Then what's interesting is they you can also buy a, a accompaniment Bible study that goes along with the DVD release and. And the Bible study is based on the book of Job. So that really says a lot about my life. <laughs> <laughs> they actually both release on the same day, April yes. 5th, right? April the 5th. Okay, and we're talking in, uh, right now it's February 2016. Yes. So if it's after April the 5th, uh, it's probably all sold out. And because of these, this DVD <laughs> and, this, and this special, Chandra's on a beach in, in the Bahamas. Somewhere. I'm hoping so. That would be great. I might be on a beach in the Bahamas anyway, you know, but uh, I deserve the rest. That's for sure. But yeah, you could go to any retail, Walmart, Amazon, anywhere you buy DVDs and, and get it. But but also, I, I'm here today, too, because I'm just proud of what the Dove Channel is doing for family entertainment. Yep. And, and I, you know... I, I I'm I am grateful. You know, I have been on the road for a long time and travel city to city to city. It's really nice now to sit in my own living room and see the comedy being done. I don't have yep. to travel yep. as much. <laughs> you have stand up for families. Yes. You have laughing in the dark. Yes. Uh, if that weren't enough, what's next? Oh, I don't know. You know, I've been doing a couple of movies that you see every now and then at Christmas time on the Hallmark Channel or on the Lifetime, and I enjoy that. You know, it's always a stab. But But the comedy will always be what I do. I will always want to walk into a room of women and sit and talk about menopause and sit and talk about you hairy men. (laughs) So it will always be a part of what I do, and I love that. I may... I went too slow a little bit. You know, I, I am still a grieving widow, and I hate that word. It sounds like a spider. You know, I am, I am, I miss my man, you know, but I am, I have a date. I have a date tonight. No kidding. I haven't sat across the table from another man in 40 years. No so way. this will be quite interesting. This will be all new material I will be talking about next year. <laughs> so the date's tonight? I have a date tonight. The date's Can tonight. Can you believe so- that? I'm this on the is, market, as my this girlfriend This is February say. 23rd? Oh, dear, yes. Is that right? February yes. 23rd, 2016. Yes. I have a date so, tonight. Let's remember this day in infamy. If you are if you are still alive, whoever you are that Shonda's yeah, dating yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah, you, uh, uh, If you're not a mass murderer. We'll know that, <laughs> we'll know that you've done something right. <laughs> well, I hope that's, it goes better than just staying alive. <laughs> a free meal, that's what I'm looking for. That's right. Now, this is the truth. My church was very, very strict. We had no dancing. We didn't call it dancing. We'd call it foot fellowship every now and then. But <laughs> dancing will send, send you straight to hell in a handbasket, so we didn't do it. And I heard that a lot. If you say that again, you're going to hell in a handbasket. Do that again, you're going to hell in a handbasket. Wear that again, you're going to hell. I was 14 when I asked my mother, how big is the handbasket? <laughs> because me and four cousins are going to hell in the same handbasket. <laughs> And who's carrying the handbasket to hell? That's what I want to know. Somebody should take that guy out. You are very overt about your faith. Yes, I am. Um, how did you come to believe in Jesus Christ? You know, it's funny. I, I make a joke as a comedian about theology in that I got saved 342 times. You know, one of those times it took. I grew up in the Bible Belt. I grew up with, with very, very religious parents. My father was a small church pastor of a very conservative church. 
Um, and I was a middle child. So that's a cross between a nun and a Las Vegas showgirl right there waiting to happen. <laughs> you know, that's just a, 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 a identity crisis, you know, all over it. Uh, but I, at some point in my childhood, I, I went forward to the altar that I had been raised in front of for years and years. And I did that again at seven and nine and twice when I was in high school and a few times through college, which is none of your business, you know? And so <laughs> I, I, God has always been present in my life. My mother talked to God as if he was sitting in a chair beside me at the dinner table. It, he, it was always spoken of. It was until I was in, uh, just before college, when I lost both my sisters. One was killed in a car wreck at 20, and one died with leukemia when she was 15. When crisis comes along in your life, and I, I hate that it took crisis for me to get a clue, but when crisis comes along in your life, it will in itself cause you to question what is right, what is real, what is good, what is bad, you know. And so I, ha I was a theater arts major and a philosophy minor. And I, I used to say all the time I studied religion to try to prove my mother wrong. And the more I studied, the more right she was. There was just a clear decision when I was about 22, 23 years of age that this is the way to go, that, that God is who he says he is, and I choose to believe the Bible. What's interesting for me in my choosing to believe, and I say that on purpose, we sometimes want our coming to God or faith to be all about emotion. And if it's based on nothing but emotion, it will not last. Because then the minute your emotion changes, you know, and I, I've been through menopause, so my emotion would change every five days. If my relationship with God or my faith was grounded on my emotion, I would, I would be in and out of my religion you know, uh, uh, weekly. And, and so I, I can't, you can't base your decision to know God or to know Jesus on emotion. What you have to do is choose. And I studied and I went to Israel and I did all those things to go, I want to know, I want to, I want to know what's truth. And it comes down to just choosing. And I choose to believe. And when I chose Something ignited that faith, and it becomes a passion, and it becomes a calling, and it becomes something that is so deep-seated that even when the toughest things happen, it doesn't shake it because my, my faith is not based on my emotion or my circumstance. Right, right. Our listeners have heard me say this dozens of times. I call myself a recovering atheist. Good, yeah. Because uh, I came to faith in a very logical way, very right. very thoughtful, very reasonable way. All the emotion. Now, I'm a very emotional Christian. I can't hear how great thou art or that some of the, up, without exactly. tearing up. But that all came later. Yes, that's once, exactly once right. I, once, I, once I bought into it and yes. chose, like you said, it rocked my world, man. Yes. I, I didn't have a choice. I, I had a choice because it's free will and I chose to believe. Yes. But the, the yearning, evidence, the longing. The evidence is too heavy. I mean, the evidence is right. too much to say this God, does, this this Almighty Creator of the universe doesn't exist. Right. And the and and the the evidence that that Almighty Creator of the universe is manifest in Jesus Christ, uh, who who raised Himself from the dead, and that's why we believe He's God. Yes. Uh, that's a historical fact. Yes, and, that's exactly um, right. We can't deny that. Right. We can't deny that. So Right, I, and you, I agree. And, and I, I, I think we who have had that intellectual journey, um, maybe that is where you, you find people that fall by the wayside or they step out of their faith or they fall from the church or they fall from grace or they have a moral failing. And, and, and it can happen to any one of us. And believe me, I've not been an, a, a perfect Christian. But I think... When you, when you approach it as choice and choosing and that, that you have to decide that if, is the word of God truth or not. So when you choose that it does, then it gives you this map and this blueprint to live by that's not based on your circumstance or the emotion of the day. Right, right. Now, having said that. Yes. We both believe. Have you ever had a time where you questioned your faith? Oh, Or absolutely. even the existence of God? Absolutely. You know, uh when I was a teenager and, and within 18 months lose my only sisters, I, I, I either thought, if there's a God, he sure is picking on us. You know, mm. um, when I beg for healing my mother to be healed and not taken, you know, I, and, and I didn't get the answer that I wanted. I didn't see the healing. And I'll be honest with you. I have lived my life in, in the church world, and I have been a Christian for many, many years. I've never seen a healing in my life. 
And I, I've never seen the dead, you know, raised. I've never seen, uh, you know, I, I prayed that my husband would be healed and live, and he didn't, and he died. I, I, I wanted my little sister to be healed from leukemia, and she died. I want my daughter to hear my voice and want to come home, you know, to her family, and it doesn't happen. And so what do you do with that? What I realized was that this, this is not about what I get and what I, like the genie in the bottle. It's about life circumstances, and life unfolds, and sometimes it's not easy. And, and what happens is, in the questioning, even when I rail at God, or I'm so frustrated, or I wonder if he's real, or if he's listening, or if he exists, it's in, it, when, you, when you allow that energy to leave your body, there is an interesting thing that happens in the dialogue of that. It's unexplainable. It is supernatural. There is a tenderness of a heavenly father that seems to engulf you and surround you and say it, it's going to be okay. And, and then you can read the stories of the other people in the Bible, iconic, beautiful people of faith who were f- frustrated and angry and messed up, and, and they made it. And, and so I always tell people, if you're angry at God, go ahead and tell him he already knows. You know, if, if you're Speaking doubting his existence, he's, he, his ego is fine. If you don't believe him, it's not going to crush him, you know. Yeah. So, and that's a great thing. That means he's mightier than we are. Yep. And, um, and so, yeah, I've, I've had those moments of doubt and discouragement. Um, and I'm not alone. The Bible's full of people that went through the same thing. And so you can't let it beat you up as a Christian. And then also you can't, you can't dwell there. Right. You know, you have to eventually either talk to somebody, a counselor, or you, or you read scripture, or you do something that makes you move from that position. So you either got to move forward or backwards, but you can't stay there. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Finally, as we wrap up, Shonda, what would you say to that person who is right on faith's edge? about to make that choice to believe or not to believe in God? You know, I, I used to say all the time, I can't, I can't make someone, you know, I can't even lose weight. How in the world am I going to make somebody believe in my God? You know, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but what I do say to them is whatever it is that you're going through that is holding you back from making that statement of faith or that step of faith, and that's basically what it is, what you have to just decide that that. Where you are is not going well, or you would not be in this place of question. The way you've been doing things is no longer working. But the, you, you'll come to a place in your life when you go, I don't want this anymore. I want something more and something different. And what I'm telling you is, that's when you engage your faith and go, okay, I'm going to try this faith in God thing. And I promise you, he will meet you there. I don't think we can say anything more than that. Shonda Pierce, the project's are Stand Up for Families. Yes, on, on the DoveChannel.com. On the Dove Channel. Laughing in the Dark. Yes. And a date. And a date. Tonight. We'll see how it goes. Coming soon to a restaurant near <laughs> you. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out. Thank you very much, Joe. God bless. Watch Stand Up for Families exclusively on the Dove Channel. You can sign up for the Dove Channel at DoveChannel.com. Again, that's DoveChannel.com. And Laughing in the Dark is available where DVDs are sold, including Amazon.com. Shonda's website is Shonda.org. These links, of course, as well as the social media links, can be found in today's show notes at OnFaithsEdge.com slash 62. That's OnFaithsEdge.com slash 62. Well, that'll wrap up today's show. Thank you to Shonda Pierce for being with us today. Thank you for making us laugh and giggle and smile. Uh, We certainly, certainly appreciate having you on. And thank you for listening. You mean a lot to me, and you mean a lot to this show. Remember, God is real. He loves you, and so do I. God bless. Thank you for listening to On Faith's Edge. You can subscribe to the show via iTunes, Stitcher, Internet Radio, or your favorite podcast app on Android, Apple, or Windows devices. To reach out to Joe or leave comments about the show, visit onfaithsedge.com. You're important to us, and we would love to hear from you. Shonda, you are on The View. I was. I have one question for you. Uh Uh-oh. Through your entire experience on The View, I'm dying to know your opinion on something, really. Okay. Whoopi Goldberg versus Joy Behar. Cage match. Who wins? <laughs> I'm pretty-
pretty sure it would be pretty close to a tie. Probably Whoopi could take her, though. (laughs) (laughs) And it's a fight I would never want to (laughs) see. That's funny. That's funny. That's awesome. That's hilarious.